Okay, now the best choices for Kamala's VP picks would be Roy Cooper, Josh Shapiro, and Mark Kelly. Mark Kelly being the best and the one that I would definitely pick. But my thinking is, why does she have to pick just one of those three? Now I'm going to get to that in just a second with a audacious plan that nobody's ever done before that she could do at the convention and not just collect one swing state, but maybe three swing states. But first, let's take a minute about why I think those are the three people that she really should only be considering. First, you have people that are pretty obviously disqualified because of different demographic reasons, like Gretchen Whitmer, Gavin Newsom, Pete Buttigieg, Wes Moore, Andy Bashir. And the weird thing about it is, you know, Kamala doesn't need somebody who's super young. Like, she's already 20 years younger than Trump is. Just by her being Gen X, she's already the young punk in the race, you know? The ironic thing would be Biden was too old, but if you have Kamala and then a 41-year-old VP, then it's almost like, well, did she go too young or in the opposite direction? Which she doesn't have to do that. She's already going to get a lot of youth. So she can just think about pretty much anything but age now that she's at the top of the ticket. Then you have somebody like Tim Waltz, who is 60 years old, but he looks about 80 years old. Like he looks older than he is. And Minnesota isn't really in play and doesn't totally make sense to pick him for any real reason. J.B. Pritzker, the same thing to where Illinois is not really in play. And if people People wanted to vote for a fat billionaire, they could just vote for Trump if they wanted to get somebody who bought their way into it. Kentucky's not really in play, so I don't think she's really even thinking about Andy Bashir. and he said he hasn't gotten vetting materials, plus he inherited the job from his dad, and J.D. Vance has already said that. It could draw attention to the fact that Kamala is the first major party nominee in forever who hasn't run a primary. I don't think she wants to draw attention to that necessarily, so you have a good, strong shortlist of three people that could help her in three different swing states. Mark Kelly is the best for a lot of different reasons. He flew combat missions. J.D. Vance's military service had no combat experience whatsoever. Mark Kelly actually put his life on the line. He's an astronaut, which is undeniably cool and would inspire people at a time when people really need to be inspired. I think that it's hopeful to look at something like that He's stuck by Gabby Giffords throughout her aphasia and her decline, which I think draws attention to what a dog Donald Trump is. And Gabby Giffords shooting, I think, really undercuts the sympathy that Trump got for his ear scratch. You know, I mean, he's really not even wounded at all. But I think Gabby really almost dying from being shot several times could really undercut the sympathy. And at the convention, if he chooses to tell their love story and go into depth about Gabby and the shooting and the aphasia diagnosis after that, I think people are going to be moved to tears. I think it's going to be a really powerful moment. And of course, Arizona is one of those states where Kamala may not win it if she doesn't pick him, but they have a Democratic governor, they have two Democratic senators, they have a Democratic secretary of state, they voted down Trump's hand-picked stooges, and I think they're looking for a reason to vote for her, whereas I don't know that that's true for North Carolina. In North Carolina, Roy Cooper is the second best choice, but John Kerry picked John Edwards back in 2004, and it didn't make any difference. They didn't win North Carolina. Barack Obama hosted the convention in North Carolina in 2012, and that didn't make any difference. They didn't win either. North Carolina has flirted with this too many times, but they have two Republican senators. I think it'd be a nice to have, but not necessarily something you could count on getting. Pennsylvania, you definitely need it and want it. But the problem with Josh Shapiro is he's very popular maybe within Pennsylvania, but she has to get Wisconsin, Michigan, Arizona, Virginia, Nevada, or a combination of those. I think Mark Kelly is more popular overall. And Shapiro, he just sort of doubles down on strengths that Kamala already has. She was a prosecutor. She was an AG. He's the same thing. So it's kind of doubling up on strengths rather than broadening them out to have military service and scientific innovation and a person of outstanding integrity like you know Kelly is. And I just don't know that he really would excite people outside of Pennsylvania the way that she needs to. But my thinking is, why pick just one of them when you could pick Shapiro as Attorney General, Roy Cooper as Secretary of State, Mark Kelly as VP, and announce all of them at the convention? They all come out, they all hold hands, they all take a bow, and then each of the three men goes to their respective states and campaigns hard for her, with Kelly also going to Montana and campaigning for John Tester. The biggest thing against Kelly is people say, well, if she picks him in two years, whoever gets appointed to his Senate seat may not be able to hold it. Worrying about holding the Senate two years from now is ridiculous, because if you don't have Mark Kelly go to Montana and campaign for John Tester right now, Democrats are not going to hold the Senate anyway. The Senate hinges on John Tester in Montana, which is going to be a tough race, but 
without somebody that would be broadly popular there. You have a convention where all three men come out with the rest of Joe Biden's historically diverse cabinet, the assumption being that almost all of them are going to stay on. Buttigieg got to come out there with them at the same time. They all take a bow. They all hold hands. And it's an incredibly powerful moment, maybe even a cheesy pop song in the background. But think about how epic that would be. It's never been done that you pick almost your entire cabinet at the convention. And that lets people know Kamala's not a flake. She knows what she's going to do. She's got it right on day one. She will be able to do this strong, decisive leadership. And I think that would be pretty much a winning thing she could do.